So just like how John Wall had dropped the game on the league having no vets and the Houston Rockets kind of going through the trials and tribulations, especially with the young players, not quite having an understanding what the league is really all about. Damian Lillard has sat down and kind of gave the same game as at the time he came into the league where it was transitioning from the three point shooting era was just coming in. And also the league was a lot older with vets as the league was also transitioning out of that phase and getting younger and younger. And he also dropped game on how the league was kind of missing something and giving young players keys to the franchise a little bit too early. I mean, it, I would say the biggest difference is, how do I put it? Say it. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm going to say it, man. That ain't, the, that ain't the problem. I would say, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When I came in the league, I put it like this. When I came in the league, like Jason Kidd was starting for the Knicks and Grant Hill and Kirk Thomas and Kenyon Martin, you know, it was like real older dudes in the league. I played with Jared Jeffries. He was 40 or 41 or something. Earl Watson was 40 when I played with him. Uh, I played with like real vets and it was a lot of stuff that I learned of like about being a point guard or, you know, how to lead from Mo Williams and Earl Watson and Jared Jeffries. And a lot of that stuff that he learned is how to be a professional. And that's very important, how to practice, how to eat properly, how to handle, you know, media situations. These are a lot of things that you can see from teams like the Houston Rockets. They're very unpolished. And Jalen Green, man, he has to be very careful because he's had, uh, I would say, a brand new route into coming into the NBA. And right now, he's gotten a lot of validation from the Houston Rockets. But a lot of it is based on falsehoods because they're still kind of playing a playground style of basketball and it has nothing to do with winning, especially in the NBA. And they didn't even play. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, it was just the way that they showed me how stuff had to be done. I had no choice but to respect the game. You know, I didn't have... Um, the word I was looking for is entitlement. Like, I, when I came in the league, you had to earn not just what you get from the team or like the respect you had to like you had to earn your space on the team you know it was no oh you the six pick of the draft it's your team like it, what is this your team stuff you know what I'm and all this kind of it's your team stuff kind of began with the carmelo and lebron james era when those players came in especially Melo. george call used to talk about this Melo's second coach where that was ushering in the era where teams were just like, hey, this is the guy. We're going to give the franchise to him off rip. And it kind of gave the players a false sense of entitlement. I always thought players like Melo kind of suffered from this, especially from the early part of his career where off rip, he was kind of given certain privileges and he was kind of ignoring coaches as once again, his first two coaches, he was having issues with them because his team was giving him way too much validation. And I think now the biggest difference is you don't have that veteran presence so you got players who are more talented than ever coming into the league they're getting picked you know one two three four five they're making more money than those picks ever made so not only that now you're giving them the keys to the franchise there you know there's nobody there to to really let them know like you super talented but like you got to earn stuff around here you know what i mean you got to earn your way so they come in and everything is just given to them from the beginning so that that affects how they are the way they play like they play for themselves they play for stats they you know think that they're lebron james when they make an all-star game or you know what i'm saying they get a max contract it's all under false pretenses of course if your team lets you shoot about 20 shots a game your averages of course are going to be up especially in this league today with the way the rules are but let's not forget to add on hype culture on top of that. All these brand new media outlets that have highlight reels of these players from, you know, high school all the way to coming into the league. These players are already hyped up and you add on top of that the NIL deals and these guys monetizing their image and all the hype around them. It could lead to a false sense of reality, especially coming into the league where all the players are good. It's just different. I don't know. I don't know how to completely put it together. But the NBA I play in now is not the NBA that I came into. And I expect it to evolve. Everything is, is constantly changing. But, like, I feel like I play for 
the love of the game. Like I want to, I want the competition. I want to know what it feels like to win. I want to see my teammates do well. I want to see my teammates get paid. You know, like I enjoy the uh, the bonding part of it. Like we spend more time with each other than anybody. But now it's like, yeah, now it's like these guys are already coming in rich. It's funny because if you look at a lot of these NBA teams, guys bond very close together when nobody's really paid yet. But then once the team starts handing out these big contracts, guys tend to start separating. It's strange, but the same kind of concept applies outside of the NBA. A lot of people have very close friends in high school and no one's really rich or anything. Everyone's kind of like, you know, kid broke. That's when you tend to have your closest relationships. But then when guys start getting older and guys start getting their jobs and getting established, just normal people tend to separate and friendships and bonds don't tend to be as close the older you get. But at the end of the day, Dame and John Wall kind of gave the same game. And all this pertains to teams like the Houston Rockets. And believe me, the Rockets are not the only team in the NBA that are suffering from this issue. There's other teams that have the same problem. And it's kind of a juggling act that Adam Silver is going to have to make between the league getting a lot younger and younger and guys coming into these franchises with this hype machine behind them and franchises kind of banking on these guys to be the monetary benefit and carry the franchise, I would say, into the positive when it comes to making money. So it kind of creates this gray area where a lot of these players can come in with a false sense of entitlement.